Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm one of the readers, healers, teachers, and managers here at the House of Intuition. Uh, today we're going to be talking about freezer spells. So, a lot of people these days are familiar with the concept of a freezer spell thanks to the internet, but essentially what a freezer spell is a container spell uh, containing something that you will throw into the freezer. Often people will assume that there has to be a mason jar or some sort of canning jar involved, which is, in my opinion, probably the easiest and safest way uh, to perform the container spell. Honestly, it's less messy, so it's my preferred method. But historically, you can do a freezer spell with newspaper, paper, fruits, vegetables, anything that can be hollowed out and stuffed uh, with paper or herbs can in turn become a freezer spell. So appropriate times to do a freezer spell, when is it appropriate, why you should do it, if you should do it at all, um, varies by person to person. When it comes to freezer spells, I usually recommend them if you're trying to freeze a situation that is causing you panic, if it's causing you distress, if it's some sort of situation that you no longer want to affect your life, that's sometimes what a freezer spell is good for. Now, of course, if this is a small situation where, you know, you don't want someone to bother you at work and it's just like a small thing that they're trying to follow up on, perhaps not a freezer spell. Freezer spells are more for big situations in my opinion. For example, if you're at work and people are gossiping about you, that's probably when you should do a freezer spell. Uh, if you are having a situation where friends are back talking you or talking about you behind your back, that would be an appropriate time to use a freezer spell as well. And for any sort of negative influences that you want out of your life, a freezer spell would be appropriate. Uh, in addition, there are some modern day practitioners that try to co-op freezer spells uh, to freeze a lover with you um, that utilize certain containers rather than a mason jar. They might use a zucchini or cucumber to represent the phallus uh, or a fruit to represent the vulva uh, as a way to kind of keep their partner close to them and minimize the amount of infidelity that may be occurring. But this may be uh, detrimental to the relationship as often we freeze uh, phallic or vulvic looking containers as a way to freeze their ability to have intimacy with their partner. So freezing a partner to stay with you is probably not the best way to go about it because it may actually affect the longevity of your relationship. Uh, in terms of timing of when to do it, if you go by the weekly patterns, you know, certain days are ruled by certain planets, in my opinion, probably the best timing to do a freezer spell would be either Tuesday or Saturday. If you go by the moon phases, you would prefer to work with the waning moon phase. So wait until after the full moon, but before the new moon. This is the best time to do any sort of banishment ritual. And you can even do it when the moon is completely new, so it's completely dark, not in the sky at all. We call that the dark of the moon. This is also gonna be a really good time to do a freezer spell. And that actually brings me to my next point about appropriate timing. Rather than going for a freezer spell right from the jump, you might want to try other rituals to help resolve tension, to help ameliorate uh, the relationship between you and whoever is the target of your freezer spell first. Uh, you might want to try a honey jar, sweetening work, those kind of situations. And if those don't work to the effect that you wanted to, perhaps then you want to do a freezer spell. And now we're going to talk about how to set up your freezer spell. When it comes to a freezer spell, you can use any sort of container that you want. This can be uh, paper that's been dipped with a liquid so it freezes solid. Uh, you can use fruits, vegetables. You can use a mason jar, which I have here, my preferred method. And if you are more into the traditional methods um, or more unseemly method, I guess is a Another way to say it, you could use a animal tongue, uh, such as a beef tongue. Just bear in mind, it is large, will take up a lot of space in your freezer, so I prefer to go with the smaller versions of the containers. One of the important ingredients to utilize for a freezer spell, in my opinion, is herbs. I'm big on working with herbs. It's probably one of my biggest 
passions about magic in general is the herbal magic. So a freezer spell, I tend to use more heavy-handed herbs. These will teeter on the am I cursing or am I protecting uh, kind of odd gray zone of herbs. So one of the herbs that I like to utilize is red pepper flakes. And any sort of spicy material will do. Don't go for sweet spices like ginger, uh, don't go for cinnamon. These are spices technically, but they're not the heat that we want. There is one spice that is a little bit more gentle that can be used and that would be clove. And that has more symbolic meanings. Um, if you guys have ever seen cloves, I don't have any here with me right now, I'm sorry. Uh, but a clove looks a little bit like a nail. So it's meant to symbolize nailing words down, nailing a person's tongue down symbolically. And not just that, it does have some numbing qualities to the actual herb. If you brew it as a tea, it does numb your mouth a little bit. So it's meant to kind of make your mouth numb, meaning you freeze the words of the people who are talking ill about you. Really good for stopping gossip magic. You can also use black pepper, which is really good. Use either the powder, the crush, or the whole ones. It's at your discretion. And black pepper is really good for protection, and in certain traditions, it is used for more of a heavy-handed protection, borderlining on cursing. Uh, so use at your discretion, whatever you feel comfortable with. I like it for its protective qualities. The other item that you can use that I'm very fond of is alum. It's this powder, you'll find it in the baking aisle. It's really good because it creates a bit of a puckering quality in your mouth. Um, I'm not saying that you should try to put it into your mouth to experience it, but if you do, it dries out your mouth. So it's similar to the clove where if you have some in your mouth, it dries it up. So it stops up your words. But you can use other herbs such as slippery elm bark, which is very popular uh, because it gums up your mouth. You can use certain herbs such as cactus needles because it's prickly. You can use other spicy herbs, cayenne, paprika, any of those heat-oriented herbs. Now, the other aspect of working with a freezer spell is the liquid that you're using. Now, most basically, you can go for water, although in a situation of a freezer spell, you can always tailor the water so it's a little bit more filled with intention. Uh, for example, vinegar is probably my favorite liquid to use. It's tart. I'm sure you guys know what vinegar is, but if you don't, it is a acid. So when you have it in your mouth, it will cause a bit of a puckering. Uh, you can also use teas made from certain herbs, such as clove, uh, such as pepper. So it's really at your discretion. There are even some traditions that will utilize a uh, container of a hot sauce bottle. Uh, oftentimes something from the south is very traditional. Anything that's like a hot, spot, uh, hot sauce that is tart and spicy can be used as a container and the liquid. So it's at your discretion. You don't want to use certain liquids that do not freeze. So don't use alcohol, don't use oils. You want something that will freeze uh, in the jar. Otherwise it's not a true freezing spell in a sense. It's just a slowed down uh, spell, I guess, just because alcohol and oils don't freeze uh, unless it's in the right situation. So go for a liquid that you know for sure will freeze. The next item that you'll need is a representation of the other person. So for example, if you have uh, a picture of them, a business card of them, um, you can even use clothes. And if you don't have these items, because sometimes we use freezer spells on uh, people who are not necessarily always physically close to us, so we can't pluck a hair from their head or anything, you can always use a piece of paper that you've written their name on. And I'll show you how to do a specific way of writing names on paper uh, that's been taught to me. Now, for a freezer spell, I usually start off with writing the name of the target or target involved. If you have multiple targets uh, that you're trying to have this effect on, I don't expect you to have multiple jars. A freezer can only hold so much. So write their names on different sheets of paper uh, and you can put them in the same jar. 
the way I would write their name uh, is either one time, three times, or nine times. I like to go with odd numbers. And after that, I will write my intention either over their name to impose, in a sense, a power or an effect onto them. So in this example, I would say, uh, be quiet, stop talking about me. You want a short phrase because your hand will cramp if it's too long of a intention. After that, you will fold the piece of paper into a small packet. Now, this is where different people will do different things. You can add some of the herbs onto the paper and then fold it into a small packet. Or you can just fold the paper into a packet and pop it into your jar. It's at your discretion. After you have folded the paper, popped it into the jar, you can add extra herbs. You can add the red chili pepper flakes, or you can even use whole ones. You can add the black pepper uh, powder or corns if you'd like. Uh, you can also add other items such as nails, uh, needles, spines from a cactus, uh, lemon because they're tart uh, when you eat them. You can add a heavy pinch of alum. This is where you can be very creative with the items that you add in. Some people add certain items that are symbolic to their intentions. Uh, for example, there are even some rituals that will add uh, chopped up pieces of beef tongue or animal tongues, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, other people will add certain uh, excrement, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, of birds, for example. You don't want to necessarily add anything that belongs to your physical body. You know, don't use your own uh, nails, hair, excrement, nothing that belongs to you. So don't think about spitting in this or peeing in this or other things into this jar. You don't want that close connection with you in that freezer per se. Uh, but if you have some of theirs, go for it. <laughs> A little hard. Don't try. Um, but you can also add other things such as cactus spines, uh, needles, um, like I said, nails, like hammering nails. The rustier the better. Um, you can add broken pieces of glass, lemons because they're a tart. Anything that's in a sense going to cause discomfort if you were to put it into your mouth. If you can't stomach that idea, then it's probably not going to be a good idea. Or no, if you can't stomach that idea, it's probably a good idea to put it into this jar. So once you have added all of the herbs and accessories into the jar, you will then top it off with your liquid of choice. Like I said, I prefer vinegar. Some people will do salt water, uh, water mixed with Epsom salt, uh, a tea made from cloves and other herbs that will be uncomfortable. Uh, it's really at your discretion. But once you have filled up the jar, I always like to remind people to leave a couple inches away from the top of the jar so that when you put it in the freezer and the liquid freezes, it may expand. So you want to accommodate for that room. Otherwise, you will have uh, a shattered jar in your freezer, which is never good for anybody. Uh, once you have filled it up, seal it however you choose to seal it and pop it into your freezer. Some people also wrap it in some aluminum foil just because that also has certain intentions associated with it. If you do choose to wrap it in aluminum foil, just make sure, make sure the shiny side is facing inward because aluminum foil has two sides, a dull side, shiny side, shiny side in. Um, but you don't have to take that step. Pop it into your freezer and just leave it there. The other thing that you can do with it uh, before you pop it into the freezer is you can also burn a candle on top of it, leave it on your altar, pray over it uh, to say, you know, may these people be silenced, may these people be, you know, uh, far away from me, may they no longer cause me harm, and just burn a small little chime candle, a four inch candle, um, or larger if you feel so inclined, uh, that you have set intentions of banishing, um, you know, silencing, whatever your intention is. Burn the candle on top of the jar if the lid is metal. If it's plastic, probably don't do that. Um, but after that's done, seal it up, wrap it up, pop it in the freezer, and let it do its thing. 
So when it comes to the freezer spell, some people expect immediate results. Sometimes when it comes to container spells, they do take a little bit of time to see full effects. Uh, so I wouldn't expect a immediate 100% change in the target. It does take a little bit of time. I say a about a week to two weeks is probably when you want to expect some people to be silent. If that doesn't happen within that time frame, what you can do is take it out of the freezer, let it melt, burn a candle on top of it, pray over it, pop it back into the freezer. Now, people are often going to ask, how long do I keep this freezer jar in my freezer? Um, it's really at your discretion. Some people will keep it in there for a certain time frame, you know, a week, a month, three months, however long you feel drawn to that you need this person out of your life. For me personally, I keep my, I have a freezer spell going on at home and it stays in my freezer. It's not going anywhere because some of these people are constant nu uh, nuisances, constant nuisances that I don't need in my life anymore. <laughs> So for me personally, I keep it in there at all times. You on the other hand, if you choose to keep it in there for a week, two weeks, a month, however you choose to, just leave it in there. Don't mess with it unless you're not seeing the full result. If you're not seeing the full result, like I said, let it melt, burn a candle on top of it, and then reset your intention, pop it in. And if you still don't see results, it may be a sign for, from spirit that you may wanna take another approach uh, to dealing with these people. Or it just may point to different directions that you need to take in general. Now, if you're someone that wants to keep the jar in there for a couple of weeks and then dispose of it, there are certain traditional ways of disposing of the contents within the jar. Now, what you can do is let it melt, uncork it, unscrew it, and take it to either a four-way intersection uh, that's very traditional to pour the contents in there and just let the universe take it away uh, or street cleaning, whichever comes first. Uh, and then you can also, as a option, take it to a river and dispose of it there. So that's one way of disposing of the jar, uh, the contents of the jar. If anything, I would say toss the jar too, but recycle it. This is not necessarily a jar that you want to reuse for another purpose, unless it's specifically your freezer jar uh, container moving forward. But like I said, some people will just keep their freezer spell forever. Some people will only keep it for a short amount of time at your discretion. So another thing that you really want to make sure when you do a freezer spell on a particular individual is probably don't continue hanging out with them if they are within your friend circle. because. That, in a sense, defeats the purpose of the freezer spell. Don't try and test magic by saying, well, I did this freezer spell on them, so let me go try to hang out with them and see what's going on. Take every approach that you can to avoid the people that you've put into the freezer spell if possible. Uh, if This is probably not going to be possible if it's work colleagues, but try to minimize the amount of in-person conversations that you have with them. Uh, you could always just email them if needed, but do try and minimize the amount of contact you have with people within the jar. Um, it kind of defeats the purpose. Like I said, if your freezer spell does not seem to be having a strong an effect, like I said, it's always good to use this as a last resort after you try to do some amelioration work, sweetening work, reconciliation work. One should never go straight to the gun when there is a plate of cookies that you can offer to people instead of going in for the attack. Um, and this does take a considerable amount of self-restraint, self-reflection to look at and say, I'm going to try to make peace with this person before I go in on them with magic. So always, always self-reflect before you go in for the attack. Bear in mind, freezer spells are not something to play around with. They are quite intense and you just want to make sure that you are uh, in a sense fully committed to the work. If your intentions and your commitment are not in the work, the work is going to reflect that. If you're just passively doing it, it's not going to help you out in the long run. You really want to put your energy into this, much like any sort of ritual. You want to make sure that you're present. And that's how you do a freezer spell.
If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we are the House of Intuition. You can email us, look us up on Instagram, find us in person if you're in the LA or Miami area. And thank you for tuning in to the House of Intuition. My name is Ryan and we'll see you next time.